Hello YouTube, this is Umozo3. We've made it to lesson 16 of the Java curriculum where I'm hoping to translate my knowledge and understanding of the Java fundamentals to the YouTube community. In this particular lesson, I was thinking we could talk about another primitive data type. So we already introduced int and double, and we also have this notion of a string data type, although that's not really a primitive data type, it's an object. But there's another data type that we can be familiar with, and it's actually a very, very simple one in a sense, and it's called a character. So we already have a notion of a string object representing an array of characters, basically a list of characters. And you can kind of see that now, right? The word, if you think about the word word, it's W-O-R-D. So it's a link of characters chained together. So now that we understand string objects, we understand that we can have words and sentences and strings, we want to think a little bit more specifically about the character data type and how we can go back and forth between a string object and an actual array of characters. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So essentially what we're gonna do is open up this class. We've been working in the same class for um, basically the entire, the entire, all the videos. So this is basically the code that we're gonna work up to, which you see here, but, but we have to get there. So what we're going to do is think about printing a character. So what, in order to print a string in, Java, like a word, for example, we have a double quotation. So we could say system.out.println of word. In order to print a character, we're just going to have single quotes around a particular character. And it could be any character that you can identify on the keyboard. So maybe it's a question mark, for example, or maybe it is a, um, maybe it is the uh, end parentheses, right? And then obviously it could be a number, it could be a digit or it could be a capital W, right? So it could be anything that you want it to be. And so of course we can print these characters and this is not gonna be particularly exciting, but this is the output that we would have here. So this would be a question mark and then the nine because those are the characters that we printed. So we can actually have a data type called care character. And so this is how it's going to print is essentially what, we, what we're going to have is we're going to say care A and then you can call it whatever you want. So you could, you know, and it just has to be one character. So we're talking about one digit. So something like this. And then you could say system.out.println of A. And then, you know, the same kind of way that it works as string. So this should be pretty intuitive what's going to be printed here. We get that four. But what we need to understand is basically there is a character encoding. So basically every character, so a seven, an H, a colon, a dollar sign, a hashtag, an exclamation point, a tilde, a, a, a lowercase m, all of these have ASCII codes. So they all have codes associated with them. And we wanna get a sense of what those codes are. So what you should do is use, is use your search browser, your search engine, go to Google, and go ahead and Google ASCII table for Java. So ASCII table for Java, and I have this tab open. And you can probably click the first one. And it's just this simple page there, you just see some text. And what it does is it gives you the ASCII code for ASCII codes for different characters. So for example, the ASCII code for lowercase h is 104. The ASCII code for the digit zero is 48. The ASCII code for the at symbol is 64. And so we can try out these different things. What we've already talked about is implicit casting. So we already have an understanding of implicit casting. And we said that Java prefers doubles over ints. So it'll, if, you know, if you're combining an int with a double, the int becomes a double, right? Because, so it prefers doubles over ints. And we also know that Java prefers strings over doubles, okay? But we can also say that Java prefers ints over cares. So what do I mean by that? What happens if you go ahead and say system.out.println of a plus five? Let's think about what that does. What it's going to do is you see that A here refers to a character. So A refers to the character four. So what it's going to do is it realizes it says, hey, I have this arithmetic expression where I'm trying to combine a character with an int. In order to do that, we're going to have an implicit cast of the character value of A to an int. And then that int is added to five. So let's figure out what the character value is for A. So if we go to, so for A, so remember, so for A is a variable. So A is referring to the character four. 
So let's look for four in our table here. So if we look for the digit four, it looks like that the, the ASCII value, the character value for that is 52. And so that would actually be what value A is converted to. This is called an implicit CAS. So if we do 52 plus five, we should actually see a 57. And so we're going to run the uh, output and that's actually what we see here. So that's the 57 that you see here. And it's because as it was an implicit cast. So the A was automatically converted from a character to its int form. And you can find that table of int forms for all of these one digit characters right here. You can see all the common symbols on your keyboard. So apostrophe, star, dollar sign, even the space, anything that you want. But we're not talking about a whole string. We're, talking, we're not talking about an array of characters. We're just talking about one character. So for another example, what if you did int x equals a space and you said system.out.println of x. So here it wouldn't print the character space. It wouldn't just print, it wouldn't print the character space. It would convert this space character to its integer value. And according to this website that I pulled up, the character value is 32. So if we print the value of x, we should see 32. Okay, same thing if you made it a double, then it would just immediately be converted from a character to a double. This happens implicitly. You could do it explicitly if you want. You could do it halfway explicitly and halfway implicitly. What if you manually converted the character to an int, but then that int automatically implicitly gets cast to a double, right? So this is going to this is going to be 32.0 now. So hopefully that's kind of clear to you how that works and what, what's going on with that. And um, you can also convert an int to a care, but you would have to do it explicitly. So what if you want to take one of these numbers and get the character, right? So what if you know the character code and you want the character? So take the 97, for example, and you want the lowercase a. So what you would do is you would do care g equals care of 97. And then if you say system.out.print ln of g, what do we expect? Well, 97 corresponds with a lowercase a. So now if we hit compile and close and then we run it, that's the a that we're looking for. And then, you know, you can add things together too. So if you add together um, the care of two numbers, then that's what you would get. So, you know, if you add together, for example, you know, a capital A, with a capital F, you would just add 65 plus 70. So that would be 135 if you did that, right? So if you did um, system.out.println, what if you did capital A plus capital F? So this would convert, you know, you're talking about adding one character code to, an, to another character code. You can't do that. These are automatically converted to integers and instead we would be dealing with just the sum of their character codes. So hopefully all of that's clear to you and you know hopefully there are enough examples for you to practice with that. We can also have an array of characters. So let's think about an array of characters where we could have something like a five maybe and then a dollar sign and then a period and then a lowercase g, lowercase s and then a three and then how about a dash or something like that. And so this is all valid. So I just have to um, make sure that uh, all of the uh, oh, we have to have the name of the character data type. So let's call it characters or something, right? And so those are just characters. And so what you could do is you would have to make sure that the syntax is correct here. But now what you could do is you could actually make a string out of a character array. So we were talking about a, how a string object is just an array of characters. So let's go ahead and go back to Google. And we've already in lessons five and six, you'll recall that we Googled the string Java API. So you want to Google string Java API and you've seen this API before. So this is from the string class, but we want to look for basically two different methods here because one of them will allow us to take an array of characters. Remember, we talked about how an array is just um, a collection of, of items, right? And you can change items if you want. So you could say characters of zero is you know you could say that this is going instead of, instead of having a five there I want to have a capital T there or something and so then that would give you a different a different result but now what if what happens if you want to get a string out of here so essentially what you would do is you would have to do a copy value of so you do this copy value of method you do it right here and so what you do is you here's how you do it so you're going to say string x 
equals string dot copy value of, and then you feed in the array of characters. So this is the notation for it. And you don't have to like assign it to a variable, but this is what you need. You need string dot copy value of, and then you feed in the um, characters array, okay? And here, since we're reassigning characters of zero, I had curly braces over there a second ago, but that was an issue, right? Because curly braces means an array, but characters of zero is not an array of characters, it's just a character. So you write string.copy value of. So make sure you under you make sure you write this, okay? And you pass in the character array. And now if you wanted to see X, now if you wanted to see that string, it would be those things together. So you'd have a T dollar sign dot G S three dash. And so you can go ahead and compile and run it. And then this is exactly the string that you would get. So this is this weird string, right? It's just those characters that are just strung together. And that's exactly what we have here. You can also go the opposite direction. So what if we wanted to have these character? What if we wanted to have these character? What if we wanted to have a character array? So we can go the other way. So we can say, say um, character result. What if we want to form an array of characters based on a string? In order to do that, you would basically just do the, you have to look in this API, there's a lot of commands here, but it's going to be the to care array, okay? And you call that on a string object. Okay, so here's what happens. So you're gonna do, you, you can do it, let's do it with a different one. So pizza dot to care array, or, or we'll, do it, we'll do it with the original one. So we can do X, right? So X was a string that was made out of turning the character array into a string and now we're going to turn the string back into a character array and call it character result. It's a new character array. So we're going to take that string, that intermediate string, and we're going to say x dot two care array dot two care array. And that just produces an array. It produces an array of characters. And now you can do anything with this array, right? So now you can figure out what the length of that resultant resultant array is and obviously that should just be the same as the length of this should same as the length of this so we're looking at seven characters you know the length of the string is seven and the length of this other array should also be seven so hopefully we would have seven for the length of this character array. this would be seven and then we could also print the ascii values let's do it with a for each loop so basically now we can review three different ways to iterate and print the character codes of the values in here so there's three different ways to do it and we can do all three of them so what we could do is either we could do while you know you could do you could come up with an index so int r equals zero while r is less than character result dot length you know because now we're going to iterate through the character result remember and just make sure that this character array that we formed has the same set of characters as this original character array that we had, right? Does this make sense? So we had a character array, we formed a string out of it. And then once we had that string, we formed a character array out of the string. So we went in both directions. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to say where we wanna get the character code of each of those characters. So we're gonna say int character result of R. So it's going to index the R position of the character result and it's going to convert it instead of just printing that character it's going to print the character code right so that ascii code that we were looking at earlier in the video and then remember in order to prevent an infinite loop you need to say r plus plus or r plus equals one or r equals r plus one any of those three another way you could have done this you could have said four int s equals zero s is less than character result dot length s plus plus and then another way you could have converted the character to an int, you know, to its character value, instead of, you know, doing this explicitly, you could have done an implicit cast maybe with a zero. So if you just add zero to it, this doesn't really affect anything. The only thing it does is it transforms that character. So that instead of it being an actual character data type, it becomes an int. Remember, it's an implicit cast, just like ints are implicitly cast to doubles and double, doubles are implicitly cast to, sprint, to strings. So now you have zero plus character result of R, so you should get the exact same things and we can verify it all three times. Then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say for each care 
um, zebra, you can call it whatever you want, in character result, we can print that. Okay, or we could say something like, we can turn it into we can turn it into an int. So we could say something like int e equals zebra system dot out dot print ln of e. So these are three different, slightly different approaches that you have for printing the character array and really understanding what these ASCII codes are and what you can do with these. So if you do, um, you know, now you can compile it and then you can go ahead and run this. And then we have, uh, we have an issue here. So to zero plus character result of S, right? Why was I saying character result of R? It doesn't know what R is within this S loop. So we're gonna say character result of S, that's good problem solving. You're gonna to have to do that when you write code, believe it or not. And you're going to actually see the same sort of um, string of numbers over and over again, right? So we see this 84, 36, 46, 103, 115, 51, 45. Those are the seven character codes of those characters that we had. So you, do you remember how the first one was a T? We changed that first one to a capital T. So that's why we have an 84 here. So that's, what's get, that's what gets printed. And then the, that's essentially how it works. So that's the care data type and you should be familiar with one dimensional arrays and how to iterate through them, how int is preferred over care, double is preferred over int, string is preferred over double, although certainly we can go back and forth among those and uh, you just wanna be familiar with the data types and the distinctions between them. You know, we can also add things. So you could say, you know, int t, you could have started with like an f minus two and then you can, you know, see, and then you, what if you convert that t back to a character, right? So it's gonna take the character at F and it's gonna be two characters before that. And it's going to convert that back to a character. So we look at F that has value 102. It's gonna do 102 minus two to get 100. And then the character with code 100 is a lowercase d. So that's what we get down here. So that's the character class. That's what I wanted to show you in this video. In the next video, we'll talk about two dimensional arrays as well as a brief foray, a very, very minor topic on escape sequences, which is unrelated to 2D arrays, but it's good to know because we are going to get into some harder topics pretty quick, pretty quickly here. From UMILS03, thanks for watching and please subscribe.